Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to use the sum and difference formulas. We'll evaluate trig expression using those same formulas, and we'll use the formulas to prove a cofunction identity. Here are the sum and dis difference formulas for sine and cosine and tangent. You won't have to memorize these, but you certainly want to keep these handy and available uh, so you can apply them as needed. So the sine of an angle u plus v, so this might be the sum of two different angles adding up to a single angle, equals the sine of u times the cosine of v plus the cosine of u times the sine of v. And sine of u minus v, meaning two different angles whose difference might add up to a particular value, is listed here as well. So same formula but minus. And then the cosine of u plus v, a little bit different. Cosine of u times the cosine of v minus sine of u times the sine of v. And then the cosine of the difference of two angles is listed here. And tangent of the sum of two angles and the tangent of the difference of two angles. So keep again, keep those formulas handy so you can apply them as needed. So here's an example of how we might apply uh, the sum of two different angles. So find the exact value for the cosine of 75. Well, we don't really know, uh, we don't have a value for the cosine of 75 that may or may not be on our unit circle, but we do have some known values, okay? We know that 30 plus 45 adds up to 75. Well, the good news here is that we know the values for the sine and cosine of 30, and we know the values for the sine and cosine of 45. So we can rewrite the cosine of 75 as the cosine of 30 plus 45. And now we can use our sum formula for cosine listed above here. So the cosine of 30 times the cosine of 45 minus the sine of 30 times the sine of 45. So I've applied this cosine of u plus v formula, and I've input my 30 and 45. Well, going to my unit circle, I know the cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2, and the cosine of 45, square root of 2 over 2, minus the sine of 30 is 1 half, and times the sine of 45, cosine of square root of 2 over 2, and I get the square root of 6 over 4 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. I have a common denominator, so my final answer here, the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. In sample 2, I want to find the exact value for the sine of pi over 12. This is going to be a little bit more complicated with pi and a, a denominator of 12. So we need to ask ourselves what value, whether we add or subtract, is going to equal pi over 12. Okay. So think about our denominator and think about the unit circle and we have things like pi over 4 and pi over 3. Well, if we give some thought to that, what are some versions of pi over 4 and pi over 3? Well, uh, 4 pi over 12, well that's pi over 3, and 3 pi over 12 is pi over 4, so fortunately, if I subtract 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12, I get 
1 pi over 12, so we can use our difference formula for those particular two angles. So the sine of pi over 12 is the equivalent of the sine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. So now I can substitute this into my difference formula from our notes above, and that would look something like this. The sine of pi over 3 times the cosine of pi over 4 minus the cosine of pi over 3 times the sine of pi over 4. And I can substitute that in. So the sine of pi over 3, we go to our unit circle. We know that's the square root of 3 over 2. And the cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. Minus the cosine of pi over 3, that's 1 half. And the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. And I get the square root of 6 over 4 minus the square root of 2 over 2, and my final answer then, square root of 6 minus the square root of 2, I beg your pardon, that's over 4, square root of 2 over 4, so I have my common denominator of 4, and that's our final answer. Interestingly enough, we got the same answer in the second sample as we did in the first. We're not always going to get the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4. Uh, as it turns out, though, uh, this is our co-function identity. The sine of theta equals the cosine of 90 minus theta and pi over 12 is equal to 15 degrees, and our 75 and our 15 are complements. So it does make sense that we would get the same value. In objective two, we want to evaluate a trig expression. We want to find the exact value of the sine of u plus v, given that the sine of u is 4 fifths, and u is between 0 and pi over 2, so u is in quadrant 1. So we're working in the first quadrant here. Uh, we have sine is 4 over 5, so we should know that our cosine of u should be 3 over 5. This is a 3, 4, 5. We have our x, our y, and our r. And the cosine of v is negative 12 over 13, where v is between pi over 2 and pi. So that is in quadrant 2 where cosine is negative, but sine is going to be, sine is our y value, or y over r, sine is going to be positive. And here we have a 5, 12, 13, so our x value is negative 12, our y value is 5, our r value is 13. For working in, for v and for u, again, we have a 3, 4, 5. Going back to our sum, our sine of the sum of two angles, we will use that the sine of u times the cosine of v plus the cosine of u times the sine of v. So let's be careful here. So the sine of u is our four-fifths that was given to us times our cosine of v, that was our negative 12 thirteenths, plus the cosine of u, which was 3 fifths, times the sine of v, which was our 5 thirteenths. And simplifying, we get negative 48 over 65 plus 15 over 65, we have a common denominator of 65, simplifies to negative 33 over 65. In sample three, we want to prove a cofunction identity. We want to prove that the cosine of pi over 2 minus x equals the sine 
of x. So we're going to leave the sine of x alone and we're going to work with the more complicated side here. We have the cosine of the difference of two angles. So using our formula for the cosine of the difference, we get the cosine of u times the cosine of v plus the sine of u times the sine of v. We have our u and our v. u is pi over 2. Our v is x. So the cosine of pi over 2 times the cosine of x plus the sine of pi over 2 times the sine of x all should equal the sine of x. So the cosine of pi over 2, think about your unit circle, that is 0 times the cosine of x plus the sine of pi over 2. Again, think about your unit circle. Okay, it, that's 1 times the sine of x. 0 times the cosine of x. That drops out and becomes 0. Plus 1 times the sine of x is the sine of x. And that all indeed does equal the sine of x. So that checks out. Another sample, we want to verify another identity. So the sine of x plus y plus the sine of x minus y equals 2 sine of x cosine of y. So we've got our sum formula and our difference formula over here on the left side. We're going to use those. Applying our formulas, we end up with the sine of x times the cosine of y plus the cosine of x times the sine of y, applying the sum formula. And then we apply our difference formula plus the sine of x times the cosine of y minus the cosine of x times the sine of y. That should all equal 2 sine of x cosine of y. So let's simplify what we've got here. Looks like our cosine x sine of y, we have one that's plus and one that's minus. So those simplify to zero. And then I have sine x cosine y and another sine x cosine y. Hard to see that, but that is, I have two sine x cosine y's over here on the left side. And sure enough, that does equal two sine of x cosine y on the right hand side. So that one simplified pretty easily. So there you go. There's an introduction to the sum and difference formulas. Keep those notes handy and we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.